Today's episode is about base planning and it will show you how to take an area like this, like this area here, and areas like this, and turn it into something like this, and like this. Let's jump into the video and explain. Last episode, we made this awesome looking potion room and we went over all the potions. If you don't know about potions, go back and check that one out. But that's not what we're gonna be working on today because I've kind of reached this point where like I I've made a few cool things, right? But they're all kind of hidden. They're all like hallways and like rooms and things like that. I don't really have anything out in the open. And I've been avoiding doing that because I, I don't really know where I want to put stuff. And I'm scared to start in a way because once you start placing things down, that's it. That's how it's going to be, right? And I'm going to be in this world for what, a year, a year and a half, maybe two years. I don't know. It's We're going to be here a while. So we want things to be done right. And when you want things to be done right, what you should do is spend some time on planning your base. And we did this last season, a base planning episode. It was really good. If you want to learn how to plan a medieval town, you need to go back and watch that episode from season one because it was a great one. But this time we're working in a cave and a lot of the things we're going to talk about and do will really apply anywhere in your world, above ground or below ground. And we actually have some above ground stuff to plan out too. A lot of people might not know how to plan out a cave base, and I've never done it either, but I kind of have a general idea in my head of what I want to do and how I want to do it. So if you're going to be doing planning, first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a way to mark off and color code different segments of different things. Now to do that, you're going to need to get some dyes, and they're actually not as hard to get as it may sound. If you have red, yellow, blue, which these flowers are pretty common to find, pretty easy to find. And then you also have yourself white, which you can get from bone meal and black, which you can easily get from ink sacks. Uh, we have a decent amount of them. That's where I got them from is my fish farm. So they were they were kind of chilling in there. You can make yourself almost every color in the game just by doing different combinations of colors. So you'll see that once you start to make colors like red and blue are going to make purple. Red and yellow are going to make orange. Then you can do a lighter shade of purple and make it pink by adding in some white, right? So there's a lot of different things you could do to mix up colors. We even, I didn't have my, my black on me at the time, so we can use black and then we can also make gray and light gray. So we have a lot of different colors at our disposal without having to do a whole lot of exploring around to find those colors. And with these dyes, we are going to make concrete powder. Concrete powder is the combination of gravel and sand together along with the dye to make a color of concrete. So I think my plan is first, I need to kind of think a little bit about what colors we're going to use for what thing, because we're going to be able to make a color for each one of these. And we're in a kind of dark cave. So I don't think I'm going to stick with, I probably won't use black. I'll probably stay away from the darker gray color too, just because it's going to blend in with the uh, deep slate a little much. So I think these colors right here are going to be the ones that we use. And what I like to do is I like to have colors related to each other in some way for different things, right? So like if I were to, let me organize things a little bit here. I may have our primary road or a primary pathing be orange. And then I might make secondary pathing yellow. I may do our buildings in a light gray color. And then I might do some of our like our lush green areas, ponds and things like that in the light blue. And then maybe for the like lush areas around them, maybe I'll use something like the magenta color. Now, I don't know yet what all of our buildings are going to be. And that's fine. You don't need to, because when you're planning things out, I'm, I'm tired of. Can I not look at this? Thanks. When you're planning things out, you don't need to know what everything is going to be yet. What you do need to know, though, is roughly how like large an area you want your base to span, because we are making a mega base here. And there's a difference between a mega build and a mega base, right? A mega build is one huge structure that takes up a whole like big area. A mega base is maybe a combination of a whole bunch of structures and terraforming and that kind of stuff to take up a large area. And we're going to be doing a mega base. So the first thing that you need to do when planning out your base is you want to start with the paths or the roads that you're going to have, because you, what you don't want to do is to lay out a bunch of buildings everywhere and then try to bend and 
uh, route the pathing around it, at least for me, it makes it a lot harder to do because you're going to end up with some paths that are either way too straight or have to take some really weird routes that don't really make a whole lot of sense. So I like to do it this way where we start with our pathing first and we give it some interesting shapes and bends and we make sure that it's not just a bunch of straight lines and then we fit in our buildings around it. And what I think I'm going to do, this is going to be like our main pathing that we do first. So we're going to use the orange concrete powder for this. And there's going to be two main ways that you get into this base. And I don't, I, this one I know is going to be one for sure. So I'm going to start over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this path and probably run out of orange concrete powder and have to make more at some point. But we're going to take these path blocks and we're going to start over here and we're going to start laying it out this way. Now, this doesn't have to be 100% exact either, right? It can be something that is just really rough because when you actually go to make your pathing, you can go through and iron out any details that you need. Also, don't waste too much of your pathing blocks. You don't have to put it, you know, right one beside another because that's just going to waste a lot of blocks and it, you know, these things, especially at this point, aren't that easy to get. So every so often, just go ahead and place yourself a block and that'll help you have a better understanding of where things are going to go. When I come into areas like this, where it's kind of tight, instead of running a path through the middle, what I might do is I might run it more along the edge here. That way I can have structures built in over here and have enough room for them to protrude outwards. Whereas I don't really have that room if I were to put this pathing straight in the middle. Once you get to larger open areas like this, you can then move more towards the center if you want. And keep in mind that if we need to, and I'm sure we will, to change slash bend our path, we could do that. It's not a big deal. Now, I happen to know that for my area around here, I'm going to have like a few primary like zones. We just kind of came from one, but really we're doing a lot more of our work out this way. So we'll probably have a primary path kind of curve up and go around up there. Uh, we're also using this area down here pretty heavily, too. Um, so we may branch off at some point and go down that. What we're going to do at first, though, is we're just going to do this first primary path just to kind of get it laid out and see where we want to go. Keep in mind that we're also going to do secondary uh, roads or paths as well in a little bit, too. Really? Do I want to go through this? I think I do. OK, first part of the primary path is laid out. We want to keep the primary paths in pretty open areas and the primary paths are going to connect usually like entrances and exits. So we have an exit over here. We have one over there. We'll probably have one or two more as well. That way I can come in and go out of multiple different areas of our base. And I think we could probably do with one more that comes along this way. So let's take it from, I don't know, let's say right here would be a good place to put a fork in the road. And if it were to end up leading out somewhere, I think it makes sense for it to maybe kind of curve up this way. And this could maybe be a good entrance for or a good area for an entrance exit. I don't I don't know how or why or where yet, but I think it'll work out. So I think we can go with it. Next, we want to have our secondary paths. Now, for our secondary paths, they're actually going to end up looking different than the primary ones. They might look a little bit more worn down, a little bit less structured, something that signifies that they're not as big and grand as the primary paths. The whole purpose of using secondary paths is to reach to areas to fill in so you can get towards where you're going to be building things, right? So, for example, I might need a path that kind of leads up into here because this is an area that could probably fit some structures in it. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of branch off of here and up in this general direction. And then that'll get us up into this area. You can also have branches come off of your secondary paths too. Like I would like to get a little bit more this way. So what I'll do is I'll just add in a few more blocks to take me into this direction to kind of utilize this area. And you can just stop these wherever. They can stop in dead space if you want to. They can stop as they get close to a cave wall or the outer perimeter of your town. If you're building a town, you kind of have the freedom to run it and do it the way that you want to do it. And let's not forget our top side area here either, because we do kind of have some pathing already here, but we, we don't have everything such as the example. I don't have anything down here already. So what we may do and this will all be kind of secondary pathing because this is not the main area of our base. What we'll do is we'll place some uh, yellow concrete going down through here. 
to lead us to this portion right here, which then takes us over to here. I have a really cool plan for something I'm going to do here, and I will be revealing that later in this episode once we start planning out where our buildings, our structures are going to go. I do want to utilize more of this area, though. So maybe what we'll do is we'll come off of this little side road right here, just like this, and we'll start to bring a little pathing up this way. I forgot to have a path right here. So maybe this path will kind of like loop around and I need to find a good way to bring it up to here. Maybe we just bring it up in a straight line right here. And then this won't stay our like tree cutting area forever ever. It's just like that for right now. And maybe that path will not only come up and then go and lead this way, but maybe it'll also come over here. We'll terraform this and make it look a little bit better because eventually we do need to connect over via a bridge to Blue Jays base. And I don't know where we're going to do that, but we'll probably put some structures, some buildings up top of here and over here and down in here as well, just to kind of fill in this top area and make it feel like it's a little bit more connected to everything else. So now that we have all of our pathing laid out, I want to, I'm not sure yet. We could do, we could do buildings, we could do structures, right? Or we could do something else that I have planned. And I'm thinking we I might need to do that something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into a creative version of this world. Right now we're on the actual server. We're going to hop over. I have a downloaded copy, recent copy. It doesn't have the, the concrete in it. But I have a downloaded copy because there is something special that I want to do. And the placement of it needs to be in specific areas. So I want to map that out first before we map out our, our buildings, our structures. And this is a good tip for you too. If you have like a cool, like something, a plan, something that you know you want to incorporate in your base and it's going to have to rely on using a specific area, you want to plan that out first. That way you don't have to erase things that you've already done. So let's hop into the creative version right now. And here we go. Local copy of the world is right here. And here we are flying around in the creative copy. And I have a really cool idea of something I want to do. And what that something is, is going to involve some really like big, maybe not huge, big, but like decent sized holes in the ceiling. And those decent sized holes will be allowing sunlight into specific areas. And then those specific areas will have like some like life to them, right? We're not going to have all deep slate everywhere, but I didn't want to go full lush cave either. So my idea for combining the two was for there to be these planned holes in the mountain that is mountain or gr uh, ground slash cave ceiling, whatever it is shining light down and allowing life to grow in those areas and in other areas like say this right here where we have some water pouring in we would form into a more structured like pond or lake type area so i think that is the plan but what i don't know is exactly like where can i where can i like best do this i kind of have some general ideas of where i would like to like these kind of bigger open areas like something like right here maybe i could fly up here and we can take a look at where this is above ground to see if it's somewhere that's roughly convenient to be able to do this oh gosh where is this going to be this is like literally in the side of the mountain maybe not exactly where we're going to build a bridge but not far off okay figuring out these holes was actually a lot harder than i thought it was going to be which again makes me glad I did this in creative mode because my initial thought was, OK, I'm just like going to pick like the kind of like bigger areas where it kind of goes like a lot higher to the ceiling and I'll put something there and I'll put something over here where it's really high up to the to the cave ceiling and I'll be good to go. Right. Totally not thinking about the fact that when you go topside, it corresponds with areas that are of importance to me already. So what I did instead was I started looking around top side and just like poking some holes down and from the bottom and poking holes up and just looking at various locations. And I found several that will work. One of them happens to be right here in the middle of my animal pen area. So these guys, they're they're probably going to get moved somewhere at some point. But this is like way in the future. We're talking about probably months from now because the big holes is something I'm not going to tackle anytime incredibly soon. But if you go down here, you can see where this corresponds to. It corresponds to this big area and this flat part right here, right? 
And then there's a couple more areas like that. I don't need to show them all right now, but just know that the general plan and when I get back over in the other world will be that I'll mark off like a circular ish area here. And that's where a lush, green, thriving, life full area is going to be. Otherwise, this place will be pretty desolate, right? It's going to be very stone uh, heavy. It's not going to have a lot of like greenery and life around it. It'll have a little bit like we'll probably do some glow berries and vines and little bits here and there, but it's not going to be a lush environment except for these places where the holes are that you can look up and see so the idea sunlight comes in things can grow in the sunlight so that's where things grow and then we'll we'll work with these uh, lakes and ponds and stuff like that in a little bit here too let's go back over to the actual world okay i got the holes laid out and i laid those out in pink so i'm thinking like flowery full of life that kind of thing right so that's why we went with pink as a color and uh, we got a big circle there. The hole's not going to be this size. The hole's going to probably be smaller, but the lush like area is going to be roughly that size. We even have a little bit of a path going through it, which is not planned, but I think that's fine. I think we might want to have little like paths and this path will look different than the other ones because it's going through a lush area. So we'll change things up. It won't be a primarily stone path or at least not in the same way that these ones are. Uh, we also have this one over here. Uh, marked out which is like right in the middle of where there's this like enormous waterfall i say enormous really it's probably just like one little water source and it's split off so many different ways it's made it really large which is fine too uh, we made this one pretty large and i think in this one we're probably even going to include our lakes so i need to get another color to mark out where we're going to have little lakes and our lakes are going to be in this light blue color. Now, again, I'm going to be picking areas where I already have waterfalls. And then what we'll do is we'll make those like more accommodate to what it is we want to do. And like this one, we're probably going to have to actually make it a bit smaller, right? It doesn't need to be so big. Maybe we just get rid of one side of it. And I don't know that I want it in the middle of the lush area. So maybe what we'll end up doing is we'll cut off this part of the waterfall and just leave this part right here. So what we can do is maybe have it coming over the edge like this and like it'll like largely intersect with this, but not totally. Right. So maybe we'll have it kind of start filling in an area from here and it doesn't need to be enormous. But a decent size is fine. So something roughly like that, I think, would be appropriate. And it intersects very nicely with our lush area. So I'm just going to do other areas where we have like decent sized waterfalls coming down and fill those in. In some places, we'll have to do some artificial lakes, right? This looks like a good area to have a waterfall. So what if we end up making one here and it makes a little bit of a pond area here? Not a big one. But then what if this also has some runoff, right? And a little tiny like stream or something comes along here, cuts through our lush area and then settles in this small area right here. And we have another little pond like area that's going to be there. It might be kind of neat. It'll almost be not like a river. I mean, we can make it kind of like a small one, like a like a creek or a stream. It'll go down it'll be multiple blocks wide, maybe. And the pathing that goes over it will maybe have to be some sort of a bridge or something like that. Nothing big. Again, something kind of small, but it'll add a really cool balance to things. And then we can have life kind of growing along the edges of this a little bit. There's no sunlight here, so it's going to be kind of sparse compared to the areas where there's going to be sunlight like right here. Um, but some extra life around the place will look really cool. Now that we have the areas laid out where we have to have specific things in specific places, it's time to move on to our buildings. Now, for your buildings, you can go a few different routes with this, right? In season one of the Bedrock Guide, I was building a medieval town and I generally knew like what different things I wanted where. I actually, I used different colors to mark off different things. Residential housing, um, community type areas like churches and military building and a thing like and things like that and then shops so I had like different colors for different things even one for like high class versus low cat class housing so they were very segmented off this season's going to be a bit different because I don't really know how I'm going to segment these things yet I think I will segment them at some point but I'm not really quite sure exactly how that's going to occur yet. So what I think I'm going to do is wherever our buildings are going to go, I'm going to put in 
a rough shape, not even a rough shape. I'm just going to probably do a rectangle to kind of like mark off the area. Whereas in season one, I actually like made the shapes that we're going to make the buildings ahead of time. Again, I don't, I, these buildings are going to be big and they're going to be designed on the fly, like at the time that I need it. So I don't want to go through and have to complex, think of that complex like way in which I'm going to shape these things in advance. So instead what we're going to do is we're just going to claim an area, right? And I might put these ones down a little bit more densely and a little bit more purposefully. So that way I can like quarantine off the area, so to speak. And I don't mean to use that term. It's just, it works for what I'm doing here. Uh, but like every other block, I think like really this whole like area right here will probably be two separate buildings. So we can have a large one over here and a large one over here. And maybe just to kind of signify that we do something like this where we kind of just cut them off and put them separate. And I'm going to pick a lot of different areas around here where I want to do this. And one of our ideas here. And doing this is we get to more choose where things are going to go. So as we go through and build things throughout our season, we, we know where to put them and to make the place look good. And, you know, now that I think about it, actually, we probably can break this up a little bit. Right. So what if we use white for larger structures? So we're going to put these in areas where larger structures can like more understandably fit. But then we, we do need to have like some filler structures as well, I think. So what if we grab a different color after we do the white and then we'll fill in with smaller structures that might not have a specific purpose. They're just there to look good. So I think that's going to be the plan. I'm going to fill in the white structures first. OK, the white has been put down and I'm going to show you guys like a heads up view of this at the end just to kind of like recap and summarize everything. But now we need to add in our red bits. And I guess like one thing here before we before we do this, let me talk about the white sections a little bit. There's two different kind of like areas within this. There's the ones that are built into the walls. They go into the walls. So these may end up shortening up a little bit in some way or not looking like full structures because the idea is that the structure is built into the wall. So it extends in in, in a way that you cannot like visually see anymore, whereas other structures like say this white box here or this one right here, they're freestanding. They they are not attached to a wall. So you'll see the full like size of it when it gets built. Now, these red ones, these are going to be filler. These are going to be to put in what will probably, I guess, be residential housing in some sort of way. Right now, the way that we do this could be kind of interesting here because I may put, say, I don't know, like something like this. Right. And we're just going to we're going to like really roughly trace this out. We're not going to actually follow any kind of like set pattern or anything like that, but like maybe us marking this red section off right here means that this is residential. I can do whatever I want with this whenever I end up getting to it. I may put in a couple of smaller structures into the wall. I may hang some off the wall like there may be a little like thing hanging right here and another one right here and in some sort of pathway that kind of goes up through there in some fashion or maybe I even dig it in. I'm not really sure. I have I have a lot of options and I want to vary things a lot, but that's what the red is going to be as I place it down in different areas. And quite simply, I'm pretty much going to put it almost everywhere where there's not already something there. So that way we have a plan to fill up the entire area and the housing slash residential areas have been added in now, too. And you'll see them. They're just kind of blobs because like this might be two or three different houses that are fit in here in some way. I don't need to individually shape them out. At some point, I'll just decide to come over here and, and just throw in however many fit in this area. And we'll periodically do that throughout the season. Most likely, it'll mostly happen on streams, although there could maybe be a video about it. Now, mostly from most perspectives, this looks like a jumbled up mess. It all makes sense to me, though. I want to show it to you guys a little bit better. So I'm, I'm on like the actual server right now. Let me log off the server. I just downloaded a copy of the world again, a fresh copy that has everything in. So we're going to switch over to that. So that way I can turn on creative mode and just fly above to show you guys one quick time what it all looks like and give it one last explainer. And just so that way people can actually see 
what I'm talking about. This is the Bedrock Guide world. We're not joining that. Local world right here. BG Season 2. It's been downloaded. I'm in uh, creative mode on it right now. Let's fly above and take a look. Okay, we have somewhat of a bird's eye view now. So as you can kind of see, our pathing is coming from this way, right? Our main path is coming down through and leading all the way back to the area where you guys are familiar to see me see me come and go, which is the storage area back there. And that's the mining area there. And over this way is the tunnel and the potion brewing room and stuff that we just recently did. You have the yellow paths, the secondary paths kind of shoot off of this, right? Because they are helping us reach areas like this and areas like over here that our main pathing does not reach to. From there, we added in our lush areas designated by pink. These are going to correspond with giant holes that are going to be put in the ceiling here. So you'll have a hole maybe 20 or so blocks wide that will go all the way up to the sky. So you can see skylight from down here. And because there's going to be sunlight slash skylight access, right? We will have a lush area here that is growing because it is getting sunlight there. Also, we have blue areas that are intersecting and creating water for us. That way we can have maybe even more lush things densely around those and add in some more interesting bits like fish and things like that, right? Maybe even some corals. I don't know. Uh, we have things like that throughout the base. You saw what was over there. Here's another one here. I did something really interesting with this. We'll add in a waterfall that kind of trickles down and comes through here and lands in here. And then there'll be that little stream that goes down through here, cuts through the lush area and ends in a little pond there. We added in our larger white buildings. Some of these may actually grow in size because as I look at them from above, they're not huge. And I would like them to feel a lot larger and more grand, but we may do some different things with them too. I may build up a structure here that goes up quite high and then have some sort of connecting structure between this one and this one, or between these two, or maybe these two merge in and become one. I'm not really quite sure how that's going to work. I had a special idea for this one right here where it's going to go up. And it's going to kind of quickly end, right? It's going to get to here and it can't go up anymore. And then what I'll probably do is actually have little op outcroppings of structure coming out of the sides of this. That way, it looks like the building has actually continued up through it. And who knows, maybe we actually hollow it out in some way and have the building go through there and put something in there. I'm not really quite sure yet. We'll, we'll tackle that whenever I get to a build that I think, yeah, that can fit in here. And we've kind of taken that throughout the area. We have some freestanding structures as well that are not going to be built into the cave walls. Then we have our red residential areas here, here, back here. Basically, you do those last. That way, any areas where you do not fill in completely, you can put something there. Like, I don't even know what the deal with this is going to be. I didn't realize how thin this wall was when I started placing everything down. But basically, you don't want to have a lot of empty space. You want to have a way to fill your space. So you put your smallest structures in last as filler for those different areas. And here we are topside where I've laid out most everything that I need to lay out. We have gray to signify places where buildings are going to go. Um, we even have owl, uh, some over there. And there's even one down here somewhere, if I can run. Yeah, there's one down here. And we may pop in some more around here, too. I'm not quite sure. And I've talked with Blue Jay. Me and him have been planning for a while to connect our bases together in some way. And I think we're going to do it via a bridge. And I don't know when it's going to happen. It'll be like a stream episode. We'll kind of do it as like a guide episode, but we're going to do it from a stream, I think. And we're going to span a bridge probably somewhere straight across here. That way we can connect his base to my base and I have an easy way to get there. And I'll probably like have a tunnel that kind of goes through under that side and maybe like pops up. I don't know, somewhere, somewhere around here or something like that. I'm not, you know, 100% sure on that and nor does it matter at this time. And then also I have one more huge, big, enormous plan to share with you guys about the base. That big, huge, enormous plan has to do with this big, huge, enormous square in the middle of the water right here. And I don't maybe we'll end up shifting this like over this way or something. I didn't quite I don't think I quite planned out the location of it so well. But uh, in any event, you, you probably get the point. There's going to be a big structure that goes in here. This is 31 by 31 and it won't actually be a square by the time we build it. This is just our placeholder for space and to show what we're going to do. But imagine a huge tower that comes up from the ocean floor, not ocean floor, but like this little lake floor and comes all the way up to maybe a little bit higher than the highest peaks in this particular area. So pretty tall. And then from that, 
um, are going to span a lot of different bridges that take you to a different a lot of different areas. You'll have bridges that take you across to over here, up here, maybe even little holes that we dig down in here just to have little interesting things around and maybe one that leads to in there as well. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. This is going to be a later on project that we do, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be fun and it's going to be massive and it's going to be interesting in terms of shape and size too. I think you guys are going to like it. Um, at some point we'll probably start to sketch that out, but just, just know that things are going to be really awesome when we get to that point. And in terms of like early on base planning, I think that kind of puts me in a good area and hopefully puts you guys in a good area to where you can now move forward and plan out your base in a little bit larger of a scale. If you're if you're curious, why is it good to do this? Well, if you don't, you may run into a problem that I'm, I've been kind of scared to run into and luckily haven't yet. But you may run into a problem where you start to put things in places where later on they don't really make sense and it makes you unhappy with your base and if you become uh, become unhappy with your base area you may become unmotivated to play in it any longer which is something we definitely don't want to happen when we're playing uh, planning our bases or you may find that as you're putting things in or wanting to put things in you, you don't really know where to put them you don't really know how large or small they need to be so when you go through and you start to put everything out like this you're going to have a better vision for what to do and then nothing here is set in stone it, it's actually set in concrete powder to be exact and it could be moved or changed at any point in time so as we go through if we find out you know what i don't like this building right here i have a better idea of something much better that can go right there I can rip that out and put something else there instead. Or if a path doesn't make sense to go a certain way, we can change that too. We're not really set in our ways in any way, shape, or form. This is a rough outline, a rough sketch. And even though it looks like quite the mess right now, and I'm not looking forward to the next however many episodes, the rest of the episodes of this whole series of people asking me why all of this concrete is all over the place and it just looks like, I don't know, a gumball machine just spilt gumballs all over the place. Um... This is this is really going to help us out. It's it's really got to set on a good path. And if you want to follow that path with me and get more tips on how to further that base plan and put it into action, make sure you click that like button on this video so more people get to see it. And more importantly, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch me actually going through and building out this base as we go through this season of the Bedrock Guide. Also, look out for those live streams. I do go live three to five times a week here lately. And you will catch me going through and doing a lot of building around here during those streams. So I appreciate y'all being here today and I'll see you next time. Bye.